welcome to another House of Wisdom Knife video, and today we have a special treat for you. I'm going to be going over what my top 10 favorite knives are over $500, that meaning over $500 but less than $1,000. This is going to be a lot of fun for me, but also it's been very painful for me. A lot of fun in that I got to share with you my favorite knives in the higher price range, but very painful in that anytime I take my knives and I say, okay, these are going to be the top 10 favorite. I have to exclude some, and that's very painful. And it's very painful ranking my favorite from 1 to 10. It's like asking me to say which of my children is my favorite child. And that's just not fair, and neither is it with my knives either. So we'll talk about the criteria I use first of all. First of all, the cost is uh, each knife has to be over $500 but under $1,000. And honestly, I really don't like to wade into the over $1,000 knife category. Uh, some people do with the customs, but I tend not to. I like high-end production and low-end customs. Uh, the second criteria is it needs to be one hand deployable and retractable. So I've excluded all the nail nick knives and the slip joint knives. They're very nice knives in that category. It's just not my jam. The third is that each knife has to have a pocket clip. The fourth is that I allow only one knife per maker. Many of the makers I just like, and I would load them up with some of their knives, but I want to give you a, a better spectra and breadth of the knife maker market. So I'm only allowing one knife per maker. And in this selection process, lightness is not necessarily going to be one of my main criteria. Uh, for an EDC knife, I do care about lightness and off. But whenever you get into this over $500 range, a lot of my favorite knives, I like them, and I like them just because I like them, not because they're necessarily light. I'm going to have a couple of knives I'm going to show to you that get honorable mention. And the first honorable mention is the Olamic Wayfair 24-7. I have this done in what they call their acid rain formula, which is a variety of holes of varying sizes. And I got them to do it in the exact color I want. You get a lot of customization features. So they call it a mid-tech, but it's really more akin to a custom knife. So I had this highly polished blue and then gold uh, pivot and hardware and uh, a clip and I also had them chamfer the insides of the circles you may not be able to tell it in this light that same gold color and they even put some uh, holes into the clip to give it a, a continuous aesthetic theme and this knife I just really love uh, the flipper design is great. It flips terrific. It's everything that I wanted. It's a custom knife. It only costs $495 to have it exactly like I like it. And the other thing with Olamic knives is they have their production act together. They said it was going to take a month, and it took a little less than a month. So a lot of custom makers, you put in an order, and they're three, four, and five months overbooked, and they just don't have a grasp on how to meet their time constraints, but Olamic is a well-run company, and I love the knife. It just doesn't cost $100. It's $5 less than $100, so it's a great value. I'm not excluding it because it's not my favorite. I'm excluding it because it just doesn't cost enough to make the list. The next knife that gets the runner-up is the uh, Curtis F3. This is a medium size, and again, I bought this knife for just a little under $500. It's like $490. I got it on the secondary market. I believe now they go for over $500, but I like the whole Curtis aesthetic. He has this reticle uh, theme that he places on the pocket clip. It's also on his pivot. The pivot collar acts as an over-travel stop. The action is wonderfully smooth. I like the, the Warren Cliff or uh, modified sheep's foot type blade. The jimping is great. I talked with Dave Curtis at uh, Blade Show 2017 and he said he's really made very few carbon fiber knives and the carbon fiber knife with his modern jimping, which is the finer jimping, you get a really good grip on it. He said this may be the only one so this is really a fine specimen. It just didn't cost enough to put it into the over $500 category. I just love it though. First knife I want to talk about is my 10th favorite knife and this is the Martinez Von Wick Warncliffe. And uh, I had never heard of Martinez Von Wick before Blade Show 2017. And I was going over to where the South African makers' tables were, and they were all clustered in the same row, all speaking Afrikaner to one another. And I was buying their knives, and I met Martinez, and I saw his knives, and I flipped it, and I immediately fell in love with it. I'd never heard of him before, 
but he takes such great attention to detail. The handles on this are green OD micarta, and they feel just great. The blade is a beautiful Warncliffe blade. His maker mark is very subtle and not overstated, and that's the only signage he has on his whole knife. He takes great attention to detail. You can't tell it here, but the inside of his liners are jeweled, and this knife has just a wonderfully smooth action. It just falls shut. It flips out great, and I absolutely love this knife. And I'm going to call this my 10th favorite knife, the Martinez Van Wyck uh, Warncliffe knife. This knife is the first model of Warncliffe blade he's made, but it's the first specimen of the first model. This is the first knife in his life he's ever made this Warncliffe blade. My number nine favorite knife, I'm going to say, is the Tashi Barusha Rowdy. I picked this up at Blade Show 2017 also. The blade length is three and a half inches. The total knife length is 8.125 inches. The weight is five ounces exactly. The steel is made of CPM 154. And I chose the blue anodized scale with the five hole pattern than the handle. They have a lot of different handle uh, patterns. But this knife is just wonderfully made. Tashi Barush is a wonderful designer. He has this design where his blades are wider than the handle, and as a result, the blade is a little heavy and it just falls freely under the weight of gravity. It is a very well made knife. It's manufactured by a custom knife maker, Jerry McGinnis, and one of his other knives is in my top 10 also. Jerry won't make his own customs for less than $1,000, but he will make Tashi Barushas, and you can get it for less than $1,000. This only costs $500 at Blade Show, and you can get it for $450 at um, a, a local retailer. Um, this is a great value. It's a great entry knife into the design world of Tashi Barusha. We're going to call this my ninth favorite knife. My eighth favorite knife is going to be the uh, Clyde Chalinor Talon. This knife is 3.25 inches long, the blade is. The total knife length is 7.5 inches. The weight is 3.9 ounces, and the steel is M390. Everyone on Clyde Chalinor's team are perfectionist. This knife is an ideal size. The blade is a reverse Tonto and has this oval thumb stud. It's designed to look like the beak of a raptor, and I think that they succeeded with it pretty well. Other distinctivenesses about this knife are the hardware has this proprietary pivot, but a straight screwdriver can uh, unfasten it and tighten it. And the, the pivot, the standoff, and uh, all, the, all the hardware uses that same pattern in different sizes. This one has a carbon fiber inlay. Uh, on the clip, it has a, a ceramic ball as a bumper to prevent your uh, clip from getting scratched. And it has a wonderful fit and finish. And I'm going to call this my eighth favorite knife, the Clyde Chalinor Talon. For my seventh favorite knife, it's going to be the Pena's Lanny's Clip Flipper. On this knife, it has a blade of three and a quarter inches. The total knife length is seven and a half inches. And it weighs 3.8 ounces. The blade steel is CPM 154. This is the most expensive of the knives in the group. It costs just a little over under $1,000. And uh, Mr. Pena gave me a little bit of a break because I spoke Spanish to him. But everything on it is totally beautiful. The uh, clip point blade, the hand rub satin finish, the uh, handles that are carbon fiber, the bead blasted bolster with the bolster lock. Not a lot of lives have bolster knocks. And the... Uh, detent is really dialed in. It flies out whenever you flip it. And the anodized hardware and pivot look beautiful too. I really like this knife and I'm going to call it my seventh favorite knife. That is the Pena Lanny's Flipper. Clip Flipper. My sixth favorite knife in the group is going to be the Jerry McGinnis Proline Mini Exo in carbon fiber. The knife it has a blade length of 3.1 inches total length of 7.45 inches, a weight of 2.6 ounces, and it uses the steel of CPM 154. It's powdered steel. The cost of the knife is around $775. The carbon fiber version is at least a couple hundred dollars more than the full titanium version, but I really wanted the carbon fiber because of the weight, and I just like the way carbon fiber feels in your hand. Jerry McGinnis is the one that made the Tashi Barusha Rowdy, 
and he, he this is his Midtech knife, and it has a wonderful action. It feels great in your hand. It flips like a maniac, and it's very light. Um, I just love it. I'm going to call this my sixth favorite knife. Moving on to my fifth favorite knife, I'm going to call it the Burger Atlas. He was a Burger is a South African knife maker, and the blade on this knife is 3.15 inches. The total length is 7.28 inches. The weight is 3.15 ounces. The steel used is M390. This is a beautiful knife. The only signage it has externally is the maker's mark, the burger mark there. The rest is sterile. Uh, it has the smoothest action of any knife I have. It returns the easiest, and that's even the Shirogorov knife. It is just a wonderful action. Uh, the knife is beautiful. It uses marble carbon fiber. Uh, the liners are blue anodized. There's a little red thin line of G10 between the anodized liner and the marbled carbon fiber. It just gives a little pop of color. It's an absolutely gorgeous knife. The bolster is uh, bead blasted titanium. This is a beautiful knife. Uh, at GP Knives, it cost about $680. I got mine on the secondary market for a little bit cheaper. Beautiful knife, the Burger Atlas. This is the liner lock version. They also make a frame lock version. My fourth favorite knife is going to be the Brian Nadeau Mini Typhoon. The first day at Blade Show 2017, I didn't buy this knife, although I saw it because I thought it was too long. It has a three and a half inch blade. The blade's three and a half inches. The total knife length is eight inches. It weighs 4.2 ounces and uses S90V steel. But the next day I went back and it was still there and I got the last copy he had in this fenestrated pattern. He calls it aspirated pattern. I love the mint green backspacer on the knife. I like the portals that he uses there and then you can see the blade through him when he closes the blade. Uh, the pocket clip is unique in that it is not held by screws. The pocket clip dives down through the handle of the knife and then is held by tension between the handle and the back spacer. So it's a screwless assembly for the clip. It's very clever. And then instead of using a detent ball, he uses a detent nub, and I'm going to explain what that is to you. Most knives have a press fit detent ball, and so there are two clicks whenever you deploy the knife. There's a click, click. And that the first click is when the blade tang falls off the detent ball. The second click is whenever it locks up. And so whenever you unlock a knife, this is a Hinder XM18, you have to clear the ball. For example, I call it the detent angle. From the time where you unlock it to where you hit the detent ball is the detent angle. And this is about 20, 25 degrees. And then you have to uh, get the knife tang uh, beyond the detent ball, get your thumb out of the way, and then you can close it. Uh, so this knife is different because it doesn't use a detent ball. He uses a detent nub. He gets a thicker um, lock bar insert, and he mills down all the front part. In the very end, he leaves a little nub instead of a ball. And so the nub is at the very end. So after five degrees, you've already cleared the detent nub. And look at this. You, you deploy the blade the whole way, and there's one click at the end because he puts it at the very end. The only other knife that can claim this is Chris Reeves and Kosi knife because they use the detent ball at the very end of the lock bar, and they use it as a lock bar insert. In other words, the detent ball uh, opposes the blade tang and locks the blade tang in, so it has that same thing. There aren't two clicks, and you only have to just barely touch the blade and then get your finger out of the way, so hats off to the Nkosi and the Brian Nadal Mini Typhoon, but I like everything about the blade. It just flips really good. He's got a, a good flipping geometry and flipper tab. It really looks cool, and there's a cool design engineering associated with it too. The Brian Nadal Mini Typhoon is going to be my number four favorite knife. My third favorite knife is going to be the Cody Etzler Equalizer. This is a custom knife. He makes it in different sizes. This is the three-inch version. The blade is three inches long. The total knife length is 7.2 inches, and the weight of the knife is 4.3 ounces. The steel he uses is CTS XHP. It's a $600 knife, completely customized, just like the way you want it. And he made it in a month. It is really good. Cody, I saw him at 
Blade 2017, and I wanted to get an interview with him. As you know, I interviewed over 20 knife makers, and he is just a big sweet guy and he's camera shy and he wouldn't let me interview him i even was said told him i'd just give you yes and no questions he still wouldn't stand in front of the camera and let me interview him but he's a great knife maker and this is a beautiful knife he seldom anodizes his handles but i talked him into it he i said what is your favorite color that you've done before and he says i have this dark bronze that i like and oh my gosh yeah he did he nailed it this is his favorite color and now it's my favorite color too the uh pivot the thumb studs and the back spacers are all made of zirconium and it just goes really well with this dark bronze look how beautiful that blade is it's in this uh, hand rub satin slicer grind and the action on this knife is just world class it is a beautiful knife and he keeps it sterile the only markings he has on the knife are inside of the knife it says Utzler, and then the birth date, which is 417 on this particular knife. So Cody, Cody Utzler, he is not a very well-known, talked-about knife maker, but oh my gosh, he makes a wonderful knife. You guys need to put in more orders with Cody. It's my third favorite knife. My second favorite knife is going to be the Shergorov Neon Light. It has a blade of three and a quarter inches long, the total knife length of seven and a half inches long. The blade weighs three ounces, and that's quite a feat for an all titanium handle blade. Usually, you have to put carbon fiber in the blade to get it down to three ounces, but uh, not this knife. And the steel is made of S30V. The knife is also made with M390 and S. 90 v2 this is the least expensive version but i love everything about this knife uh i love the multi-row bearing system they're magnificently smooth it is the standard against which all other knives smoothness is judged not just by me but other knife reviewers the shiragarov smooth describes this knife completely and the knife is simple and uncluttered it has a pivot and one standoff, and that's it. It's got a clean, open design. It's got milling interiorly to light, lighten the knife. It has a wonderful aesthetic vibe with the, uh, the milling on the front and the wave, and it's uh, uh, symmetric bilaterally. And look at how uncluttered the clip side is. There isn't any, uh, the, the back sides of the pivots are smooth. The clip is put on in a blind manner with interior screwing, and the lock bar relief is cut internally and the lock bar uh, lock up and over travel stop are internally fixed also it's just a beautiful knife in every way and the action is beautiful too the blade is a full flat ground and a drop point configuration they didn't overdo it they kept it simple and the best slicing configuration is the full flat ground so not only is it beautiful not only does it have beautiful action it's functionally beautiful too that's the Shirogorov Neon Light, my second favorite knife. Now for my favorite knife, it's going to have to be the Thorburn A2-A5. The A5 is the smallest of all the Andre, Thor Andre Thorburn, Andre Van Heerden collaborations. There was about seven or eight of them. And I have several Thorburn knives. I'm going to show a couple more to you. These are... Uh, Another A2 collaboration that's a little larger. This has a three and a quarter inch blade, and then an Andre Thorburn uh, gentleman's folder, and it's a beautiful knife too. But I, I really love Andre Thorburn's work, and I didn't want to flood the whole competition with him because I wanted you guys to see a, a a larger breadth of knife makers. But this is a knife I really love. It has a three inch blade. The overall length is only 6.75 inches. It only weighs 2.8 ounces. It's all carbon fiber with uh, some titanium liners as you can see. The blade steel he uses is the South African favorite which is N690. This knife has a great action and it doesn't necessarily fall shut on its own like the Shirogorov, like the Burger. You have to shake it down a little bit but it fires out like a rocket. The carbon fiber handle is completely smooth and just fits in your hand so nicely. It has a little pop of G10 in the pivot collar uh, the uh, liners have this really subtle and beautiful bronze to copper anodization with a black G10 backspacer. It is just a beautiful knife, and the blade has this beautiful clip point blade that has a hand rub satin finish. Uh, the flipper tab has some holes in it uh, uh, for aesthetic value. It flips out great. I just love everything about this knife. Uh, so it's my favorite knife. 
Okay, I'm going to go ahead and review the knives again. At number 10 is the Van Wyck Warrenclyffe. And actually, Andre Van Heerden and Andre Thornburg taught Martinez Van, uh, Van Wyck how to make knives, and he's only been doing it for two years. So the Van Wyck um, Warrenclyffe is my 10th favorite. The Tashi Barusha Rowdy is my 9th favorite. The Clyde Chalinor Talon is my 8th favorite. The Pena Lanny's Clip Flipper is my 7th favorite. My sixth favorite is the Jerry McGinnis's Proline Mini Exo in carbon fiber. My fifth favorite is the Burger Atlas in liner lock. My fourth favorite is the Brian Nadal Mini Typhoon. My third favorite is the Koyetzler Equalizer. My second favorite is the Shirogorov Neon Light. And my favorite knife over $500 is the Andre Thorburn, Andre Van Heerden A5, which is the lightest of the A2 series. Well, that is completely opinion-based, and notice I didn't say the best 10 knives over $500. I just said my favorite 10 knives, and these are my favorite. What I want to hear from you is, what are your favorite knives? First of all, I want two things. Of these knives, uh, it was difficult, and I changed the order almost daily, and probably next week I'll have a different order, but of the 10 knives you see here, which would be your favorite? Mention that in the comments section. I may want to reorganize them for next year's list. And the second thing I want to know is, in this cost price, what is your favorite knife? Because I may want to be buying it and purchasing it and adding it to my collection. And then if you don't uh, dabble into the over $500 knife realm, tell me what your favorite knife is at any cost. And so I think that this is going to be a good motivator for some conversation in the comments section. I want to hear what you guys think. So that'll be a lot of fun. Thank you guys for watching. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next House of Wisdom Knife video. Mm -hmm.